In today's video I'm gonna be showing you how to create that folder. Once you go through the tutorial you're gonna be able to recreate the exact same folder and then you will be able to grab it whenever you need and you will save a bunch of time. That being said we're gonna get straight into Adobe After Effects. So we're back in software here look at the comp settings 1080 by 1920 let's hit OK and today's animation was inspired by that particular picture. And yeah we're just gonna recreate it but it's gonna be animated. So let's delete it. And the first thing you wanna do is just grab the round rectangle tool and we're gonna create a shape like that. You can hold shift. Let's recenter. Let's rename the layer to folder BG. And then we're gonna create papers. So for this, I'm gonna again grab round rectangle tool and we're just gonna create a shape like that. All right, we can change the color so we are not confused. I'm gonna change it to white. Then I'm gonna recenter and I'll change the roundness. Let's rename the layer and with that layer selected we're going to create another shape within that rectangle. So we're going to again grab around the rectangle tool and I'm just going to create something like that. Okay, I'm just going to adjust it a bit and then we're going to change the color of this to gray. Let's hit OK. And then what you want to do is go back to the properties and click on the rectangle tool and we're going to hit Ctrl D. Now I'm going to drag that shape lower. We're going to do it again. So I'm going to hit Ctrl D, drag it lower. But this time we're going to uncheck constraint proportions and we'll squeeze in X. All right, now with the help of position over here in shape transform, we're going to drag it to the left. Okay, you can hold Ctrl for precise adjustment and then maybe it should be a bit higher. All right, so we got our first paper. We can actually rename it to paper one. And also you can add the effect drop shadow to this. You don't really need to change any settings, just leave it like it is. Then we need to create a foreground for our folder, so I'm going to duplicate this and drop it on top, and I will rename to folder FG. For now, I'm just going to change the color, it doesn't really matter, but I want to do it for clarity. And what we need to do is make sure this is on top, and we're going to open up properties, go to contents, then you want to open up rectangle 1, and we're going to right click on rectangle path 1. Now here, convert to Bezier path, and we're going to delete that point over here, then this one, and we're gonna select the upper two points. Now if you double click them and drag them lower, it's gonna look like that. So now we're gonna add one point over here. So make sure to grab the pen tool, create a point here, and then add another one over here. Now what we wanna do with that point over here is align it with that one on the left. So in order to do so, we need to have rulers. So I'm gonna go here, click on rulers, and I'm gonna drag the line over here. Okay, now we can drag that point. And then while holding Alt, I'm gonna align this with the line. We can do the same over here and it should be good enough. Then we're gonna take that point on the right and we're gonna drag it lower while holding Shift. So it's in a straight line. And then we're gonna take care of that point over here and it needs to be aligned with that one on the right. So I'm just gonna select it, drag it here and we're gonna actually borrow the line to make sure it's even. You can grab the pen tool again, hold Alt and align it with the line. Okay, then we're going to get rid of the line. I'm going to hit Ctrl R to close it. And you know what? I feel like there's a bit too much space. So we're going to select these two points and I'm going to hit Ctrl T or you can just double click it. And we're just going to put it a bit higher. All right. So like I said, the color didn't matter because we're going to turn it into an adjustment layer. So for this, you need to make sure to click here. And then if we start adding effects, it's going to be applied over here. So what I'm going to go for is Gaussian Blur. Then we're going to bump it up like that. As you can notice, it's changing. Probably like 120 should be fine. Already a really nice look. Then another effect is going to be exposure. We're just going to turn it down a little bit. And you know what? A good idea would be actually adding a light sweep effect to our folder BG. So to the background. So I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to make sure to drag that point over here to the middle. And then we're just gonna mess around with the settings. So I'm gonna probably change it to smooth, then bump up intensity and extend width. Right, a really nice effect already. And then what we're gonna do is add the movement to the paper. So I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard, create a keyframe for position, and I'll move it to the beginning like that. Then let's change Y to something like that. And as you can notice, we got a problem over here. So what we could do is go to the modes and actually change the trackma to our folder PG. Now make sure to enable it again, and it's gonna solve the issue. I'm gonna probably squeeze it in a bit more. So now what we wanna do is add that bouncy effect to the paper. So now just go to the comment below and grab the expression I left for you. And we're gonna paste it in the expression window in our position. So I'm gonna alt click the stopwatch, paste the expression and click away. So that way we're gonna have something like that. And now we're gonna need two more papers. So I'm gonna hit Ctrl D for this. I will drag it below the paper one and I'll go back to the paper one. So here we're gonna make sure to have the playback on the last keyframe over here. And we're gonna drag it to the left like that. And then I'm gonna hit W on the keyboard and I'll change rotation. 
All right, so we got something like that. And then what we're gonna do is duplicate paper two. I'm gonna drop it below. I will hit you. And then with the playhead on the last keyframe, I'm gonna drag it to the right. You can again hit W or just click here and adjust the rotation. Okay, let's see. All right, looks pretty cool. And as you can notice, all the papers are showing up at the same time and we kind of want to make them go one by one. So in order to do so, I'm going to select all papers and then I'm going to hit P on the keyboard and I'll select all four keyframes on the bottom. So now I'm going to drag it by one frame to the right and we're going to do the same thing, but this time only with paper three. And that way we're going to have that nice effect. All right, we also need the text over here on the bottom. So I'm going to grab the type tool and I'll type in script. I'll probably drag it somewhere here. Let's bump up the font size. And then what I'm going to do is apply one of my animations from Motion Boost, which is going to be MB04 Bouncy. It's actually matching the movement of the papers, which is looking pretty cool. We can obviously add motion blur to everything. Also, what you want to do is go to the modes and change the track mat in our folder foreground to folder BG. Now I'm going to click on the transparency grid over here. And as you can notice, we can see through the folder. So in order to get rid of that, I'm going to do one thing. So I'm going to duplicate folder background. I'm going to drop it below. And now what you want to do is select all the layers apart from the one we created. And we're going to pre-compose it. We can call it folder. And as you can notice, it's disappeared. And just to have only one layer, we're going to pre-compose these two again. Let's call it folder. And we got a ready asset. But I would like to add a little bit of movement to this as well. So in order to do so, we're going to create a keyframe for position. Then we're going to go back. We're going to drag it lower with Y. Okay, it's probably a bit too intense. And then we're going to apply the same expression over here. So I'm going to paste it. Let's see. Right, a bit too slow, so we're going to squeeze it in. Okay, and we can do the same for the rotation. So I'm going to hold Shift, click R, create a keyframe, move it forward, and change rotation a little bit. Then I'm going to alt-click the stopwatch and paste the expression. We can make it even more intense. All right, looks pretty sick. Now I'm going to fade it in with opacity keyframes, just like that. Let's hit F9 for these two. All right, and then what you could do is add motion blur over here, and we're going to pre-compose that layer one more time. Let's go to folder again, and let me just show you how it would look on the reel. So I'm going to drop it below. All right, it's a pretty sick animation. I'm going to drop a zoom out effect on top. Let me just squeeze it in. It turned out as a pretty eye-catching hook in my opinion. And the beauty of it is that you can save that project file and use it whenever you need. That's why I created ready to use assets so we don't really need to create everything from scratch. So let me just show you something similar from Motion Essence. I'm gonna go to PC UI, then folders, let's drop it here. And I'm actually gonna move it to the right, the one we created. So you just drop it on the timeline and you got a ready animation. All you need to do is just go into the pre-comp and change the text to whatever you want. All right. Pretty fast and convenient. So if you're interested, you got a link in the description. And right now you got a pretty cool offer where you got three products in one with one price. Enough of glazing my products. I'm going to wrap it up here. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Make sure to recreate it and have it as a ready to use animation. It's going to save you a ton of time. That being said, check out the video on the screen and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.